December, which is the fourth Sunday of Advent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. collect for today. Let us pray. God our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that, as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is Psalm 89, verses 1 to 8. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders. O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the Holy Ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord? A God feared in the council of the Holy Ones, great and awesome above all that are around him. O Lord God of hosts, who is as mighty as you, O Lord. Your faithfulness surrounds you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia! Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The Virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. 
And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On the Sunday before Christmas, we are getting in the mood for miracles. And the Annunciation, which we've heard in today's Gospel, contains all the ingredients to satisfy this yearning. An angel appears as if out of nowhere, and a virgin learns that she will defy nature and bear a child. To add to the abundance of wonder, the angel alludes to another miracle. A woman, well beyond childbearing years, is in the sixth month of a pregnancy. There is much here to bring encouragement and affirmation if we're feeling like miracles are well and truly the stuff of dreams, far off and unattainable, especially after a year when he, we have been in so in need of them. The Annunciation offers us a timely reminder that nothing is impossible with God. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, as well as miracles, we also get to focus on Mary. Not something us Protestants get to do that often. She stands at the centre of this story, of the Annunciation, the announcement of the Incarnation by the Angel Gabriel. What happens may be incredibly well known to us, but it is so rich in images and meaning that hopefully we can draw something fresh from it today. In a few short verses, we are given an array of emotions and pictures relating to Mary. She is described as favoured, perplexed, thoughtful, afraid, questioning, believing, submitting, accepting. It is no surprise, given this array, that artwork portraying the Annunciation is incredibly diverse. In some, Mary and Gabriel look like old friends, completely at home with each other. In others, Mary is kneeling at the feet of a luminescent angel figure. In Henry Osawa Tanner's 19th century painting, The Annunciation, the angel is represented as a bright column of light. A heavenly being bursting into our earthly realm at a specific time and place to meet Mary. Its power and its abstractedness remind us that we do not make our own salvation, nor do we have the capacity to fully imagine the ways of God. As with the diversity of artistic interpretations of the Annunciation, theologians differ in interpretation and have debated the nature of this encounter. They agree that Mary is elected by God to a particular purpose which she wholeheartedly accepts, but they argue about the character of Mary's response. In response to Gabriel's announcement that she will bear the Son of God, Mary says, how can this be, since I am a virgin? Some theologians have questioned whether there is a hint of doubt. Surely that can't be right, in Mary's words. Some suggest it is more a response of puzzlement. Yes, but how? Others question the nature of her, her participation in events. Is she a free and active player in these events, making her own informed decision? Or do the words... Here I am, Lord, the servant of the Lord. 
mean that she resigns herself to her fate as a passive participant in the work of God. I think the best perspective on Mary's response is one that recognises the pitfalls in seeing Mary as either passive participant or autonomous decision maker in this encounter. The point is, I think, she is neither. An understanding of Christian vocation helps us here. Yes, she responds actively, not passively, a willing partner in the miracle presented to her. Mary acts freely when she offers herself as a servant of the Lord. But the difference is, there is no decision to make. To embrace her identity as the mother of God is the only choice that is true to her calling because it is consistent with who she actually is. Her choice is to be true to herself. And that, I think, tells us something important about vocation for all of us. Being who God is calling us to be is to be our own truth. There is no decision-making in this, just acceptance. The Annunciation also teaches us to expect the unexpected, that miracles aren't in the least bit predictable, something hopeful for all of us the week before Christmas. One of the many things I love about this story is that the tendency to think that those leading unassuming lives in out-of-the-way places are excluded from extraordinary things is proved completely false by Mary's surprise visitor. Living in a remote village far from the busy religious centre of Jerusalem, Mary had no hint that she was destined for a very special role. The extraordinary thing about Mary is precisely ordinariness. The selection of Mary to be the mother of Jesus is an occasion to spur all of us to open ourselves up to the unexpected and unimaginable work of God. To believe miracles can happen anywhere and to anyone. The angel Gabriel responds to Mary's puzzlement by reminding her that being incapable of conceiving a child as a virgin is not the end of the story, because nothing is impossible with God. That God can accomplish such wondrous aims is underlined by the news that her relative Elizabeth had conceived a child at an advanced age. For nothing will be impossible with God says Gabriel. Seven words to give us all support, comfort and courage when we find ourselves facing overwhelming challenges or unexpected experiences. God makes miracles through us. Mary's assignment from God is an honour met with struggle. In her day, an unmarried woman expecting a child was cause for disgrace. Nonetheless, her neighbour's prospective disdain does not hinder Mary's willingness to proceed according to God's wish. Her response to the Annunciation is exemplary. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Mary comprehends that her life, and not only hers, but the whole world's, is about to be rearranged. Perhaps Mary's words deliver God's Christmas wish, that followers of Christ will believe that nothing is impossible with God, and invite the Holy Spirit to work miracles through them. Amen. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our Lord says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Amen.